Hello everyone and welcome to some Mr. FPGA news. This week we will be talking about several Mr. Clones and future FPGA boards, the Sega System 18 core, and more. Also, check out my channel sponsor Mr. Addon, a place where you can get all your Mr. needs. Things like full Mr. setups, IO boards, accessories, and more. Now let's get to the news. Taki Udon posted more details on the console versions of the upcoming Mr. Clone. He posted images of the backsides of some of the versions being developed. For the budget versions, there are connections for HDMI, VGA, components, and composite. In addition to these connections, there are also connectors for optical audio, a 1 8 inch audio port, Ethernet, two USB ports, and USB-C power. Keep in mind that this budget version is meant to only run one system and will have less RAM than the others. I believe that these systems will either be Super NES or Genesis consoles because Taki mentioned this version having a cart slot for either of these consoles. The mainstream version will be sleeker and have fewer connections in the back. Those connections are HDMI, VGA, DIN 10, analog audio, Ethernet, two USB ports, and USB-C power. Composite component and digital audio connections are now moved to the size of this version. The handle version is not done. All that said is that ergonomics are supposed to be S tier. A flagship version is also being developed, but Taki is waiting to show it off. However, it was mentioned that the flagship version will have even more I.O. Also, this most expensive version will still be cheaper than a DE10 Nano. There have been other details given. When asked about the VGA port supporting composite and component, it was said that you will have the freedom to support any cable you want. Each version will also share the same FPGA. The budget console has a physical cartridge slot and dual populated snack ports that none of the others have. Mainstream version has different snack ports. And the flagship version will probably need more than one main board to support everything that it can do. The card slots will either be Super NES or Mega Drive. The back of the console will also have a spot reserved for NFC card. Well, Tap 2 support looks really promising. Other details for the handle are two analog hall effect sticks and analog triggers. All this information sounds awesome. I love having the option to buy a budget console that plays real cards. I'm hoping if these budget consoles see success, then more versions for other consoles can be developed and not only be limited to either Super NES or Genesis cartridges. Shane Lynch keeps progressing on his reverse engineering of Sega's Mega Play Arcade hardware. On a custom bio he's developed for it, he managed to get audio working for console games and the console version of Splatterhouse 2 is running on the hardware. The Mega Play Arcade hardware is based on the Mega Drive console, but there are differences that prevent any console game to run on the arcade. Shane's BIOS is working on overcoming that limitation. A Mr. Core is planned, but that is a long-term goal of the project. A lot of information for the Mars FPGA has been released. We have been shown images of the case which was designed by Todd from Retrofrog. The back of the device contains these ports. RCA ports for composite and left and right audio, a VGA port that will output multiple analog signals, HDMI, two USB ports, Ethernet, and power over USB-C. Other parts of the consoles will have a modular cartridge slot where you can use it to insert carts for different classic consoles, depending on the module that you use. There will also be a modular port for original console controllers, ports for DB9, N64, Turbo Graphics, and Neo Geo controllers were shown. Also, cart slots for N64 and Mega Drive were shown. There are more details about this console, and RetroGamer.jp has gotten more details directly from the team. You can head over there to read more, but the site is in Japanese, but you can just click on the translate button next to URL to have the site translated for you in a Chrome web browser. A track 17 posted about the latest work done for the coin-op collection. For the Toaplan V2 core, code for Truxton 2, Snow Bros, and Whoopi was refactored, and Techie Packy was implemented. A different version of Whoopi was also added to the Techie Packy core. The next game a track 17 is planning to implement is Gox, a game that plays like Arkanoid but with new obstacles. After that game is implemented, work will start on hardware that will help get the following games running. Dogune, Knuckle Bash, X8, Grindstormer, and Batsugun. There is also a new member joining the Coinop Collection team. 
Brandon Arnold, who does in-house reverse engineering, has finished schematics for the ZN1 and ZN2 arcade hardware, and also the DL3129 chip. The ZN1 and ZN2 hardware is based on the Sony PlayStation and runs games like Star Gladiator, Street Fighter EX2, and more. The DL3129 is a chip that is used on the Capcom CPS-2B board. A core for the ZN1 and ZN2 is only being targeted for the Mars FPGA. The post also clarified on Mr. FPGA support. Each member of the CoinOp collection team has their own process, and some do not even own a Mr. Also, technical limitations can prevent some cores from coming to the Mr. FPGA. However, source code for the CoinOp collection implementations will be made available once complete and deemed suitable by the primary developer if Mr. FPGA support is not planned. Attract17 did clarify in the post that he never said he wouldn't support Mr. FPGA releases. Mr. FPGA support will vary per core and developer process. At least there will be source code releases, which means that other developers can take a crack at it to see if they can port any cores to the Mr. FPGA. The public Patreon post has more details on all this information, so check it out if you want to find out more. A new OPL3 implementation by Greg Taylor is now being used on the AO486 core. The OPL3 is an FM sound chip that was used on the Adlib Gold, Sound Blaster 16, and other sound cards. This implementation is supposed to be more accurate, and the creator says that every effort possible has been made to replicate bit true the math of the original OPL3. Update your Mr. Now to get this new OPL3 implementation on the AO486 core. Otego released the first beta for the System 18 core. The first supported games are Shadow Dancer and Bloxy. There are also new games added to the JTS House core. These games are Quester, Bravo Man, and Tank Force. Remember that Hotego's beta cores are only available to Patreon subscribers. Once the cores are deemed stable, then they will be released to the public for free. The Minimig AGA Amiga core has been ported to Xilinx FPGAs running on the Mystex project. Mystex is a fork of Mr. whose goal is to be able to run cores on different FPGA chips and hard processor systems. It looks like another low-cost DE10 Nano alternative is being developed. This one is being developed by QM Tech, a Chinese manufacturer of FPGA boards. Not much information is given, but there is a GitHub with several pictures and design documents. One image does show how it compares to the DE10 Nano, but it is worrying that many ports have been moved around, which doesn't bode well for compatibility with current cases. Target price is $99, and the X account does ask for suggestions, so head over to the post if you like to give yours. FPGA Arcade has posted the latest info for their upcoming Replay 2 board. Replay 2 is a mini ITX board with a state-of-the-art Intel 7 nanometer Agile X5 FPGA. It's very fast and low power. We have high-speed DDR4 memory for the CPUs, which are 64-bit A76s running at 1.4 GHz. We have a new IoT Hyper RAM running at 200 MHz, which offers low latency access for cores. We also have an SD RAM compatible with Mr. FPGA cores, so porting is dead easy. The board is nearing completion, and there will be two versions, a standard and light version. The standard version has an FPGA roughly four times the size of the DE10 Nano used for Mr. The light version has a more modest chip, but still somewhat larger than the Cyclone 5 on the Mr. FPGA. There will be 4K60 video output, 30-bit analog VGA output, and high-quality audio codec with digital out. Both boards also have a removable eMMC module for mass storage. The standard version has a two-lane PCI Express M.2 slot for SSDs, along with an optional compute module expansion slot which has 4X PCI Express Gen 3, MIPI display interfaces, Ethernet, and miscellaneous I.O. Both boards have an M.2 slot for an SDIO Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth module and dual front-back swappable I.O. modules for things like DB9 or Snack controller inputs. There are lots of USB 2 slots and the standard version has a multi-mold USB-C connector. The goal for the team is to show the final board in June. 
You can join the FPGA Arcade Discord for the latest information on the Replay 2 board. There is a new tab to release. It is now at version 1.4 and what's new is a huge overhaul to amiibo handling and UI. You can now match on criteria like game, series, and character. Tab 2 now identifies game launches and commands like credit inserts separately. And MGL files can be placed directly on a tag. So that's it for this episode. I provided links to all my sources in the description. Make sure to also check out RetroRGB.com to see my Mr. News videos in block form and to get more retro related content. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time.